The CBC may have started back in 1900, but more recently, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology has developed the eBird website and app. Now birders worldwide can compete to spot rare species for their life lists, while at the same time contributing valuable conservation data. So eBird started about 15 years ago, and the idea was that there are hundreds of thousands of people around the world who enjoy watching birds, and many of them keep notes. And if there was some way to get all of that information that's in those notebooks into a centralized computer, we could learn a tremendous amount about birds and the environment. What we're looking at here is basically a, a day in the life of eBird. So this is a single 24-hour period put into about 60 seconds, and each of these yellow dots represents a group of bird watchers or a single bird watcher going out, doing a complete checklist, reporting all the birds that they saw in the field. And you can see that birds are everywhere. And because they're everywhere, we can use this information to not only understand about birds, but understand what's happening in those environments. Alongside eBird, the Cornell Lab has the Merlin app, specifically designed to help beginning bird watchers. Merlin can grab your current location, as well as the date, and then ask a few simple questions about the bird, such as the size, is it robin size, crow size, take your best guess, what colors did you notice? Maybe you saw a bird that had some gray, brown, and red. What was the bird doing? Uh, was it on the ground, up in the trees, in the bushes? Let Merlin know, and then just like a friendly birding coach, it's gonna come up with your possible choices. An American Robin, and maybe we wanna explore some of the images. So if you're trying to figure out what does American Robin look like, you can take a look here. You can also learn more about the species distribution by looking at a range map, or if you'd like to play the songs and calls, Merlin's got those in there as well. Citizen science is hugely important to the understanding of birds because it's enabling us to understand species distribution worldwide. We can also take a look at abundance and um, trends in populations. And now with some of the modeling techniques that are being developed, we can dial in right down to a kilometer to figure out what species are gonna be likely there um, and what habitat needs uh, are associated with that bird as well. What we can do with these data is we can zoom in to any particular region of interest. And the Nature Conservancy is basically able to take the results of these models and saying, okay, when are the highest numbers of pintail present in the Central Valley? When is there very little water on the landscape? And can we pay rice farmers to put water out on the landscape to provide habitat for northern pintail and a variety of other species? And the challenge of conservation now is not setting aside habitat that only birds and nature can take hold, but finding ways to develop working landscapes, working with the agricultural sector to provide you know, for food security and food for people all around the world, but also see if we can work with those landscapes to provide a place for birds too.